Hey everyone. Before the video begins, I want to tell you that I'll be streaming my first playthrough of Persona 5 Royal live on Twitch at midnight on the 31st, barring any restrictions. This will have to be streamed on the PlayStation itself due to guidelines, but if you want to join me for that adventure, you can follow me at YourBudTevin on Twitch. Alright, on to the video. You can use all kinds of personas in Persona 5. Big personas, small personas, strong personas, magic personas, and even a persona that looks like your dad. But what if you wanted to use no persona? Today we find out. Can you beat Persona 5 without a persona? Before we begin, here are the rules. I can only attack with melee, guns, or items. Persona abilities may not be used. I cannot use any skills outside of battle, not even to heal. Tutorial combat or forced prompts to use abilities do not count. There's no way to avoid these. Lastly, since the game is long, I will not be talking about the story in that much detail. However, there will be spoilers since I'm covering the entire game. Starting off, I'm getting debowed for who knows what. I choose hard difficulty this time and name myself after the current anime that I'm watching. Bonus points if you know what it is. I meet best girl Sojiro and have a bunch of adults talk bad about me while I'm in the room. I get lost at the train station when best girl, for real, helps me out. Except he didn't know where to go either, and we get arrested for trespassing. I break out with Arsene, and tutorial combat starts. I can't avoid using Arsene here, so this fight won't count. We find Morgana and escape the palace, and back in the real world, Ryuji tries to tell cops what happened, as if they'll actually believe that shit. Heading back into the palace, I get my first taste of combat. I can't control Morgana here, so I can only attack with Joker. We get ambushed and dicked on, which causes Ryuji to join the battle. In the real world, we meet best girl On and Hannah Baker, and Kamashita summons Hannah to tell her 13 reasons why he loves her so much. Kamashita is mean, and his hairstyle sucks, so we plan on taking his art. Shiho tries out for the Olympic land diving team, and On finds her way into the palace with us. I capture Pixie, and am forced to use her here, so this won't count either. On gets captured, and it's up to the boys to save her. She breaks free and joins the fight, and we finally have a full party. I leave the palace and immediately begin putting time into Takami, so I can f I mean so that I can get healing items, and I go to OY to get the most upgraded gear. That evening, I start crafting infiltration tools, which will be important since that is how I'll make elemental items. Back in the palace, I start running into enemies that make me struggle a bit. The hard part about the first palace isn't that I can only attack, but it's that I only have a limited supply of healing items. This makes getting through the palace slow and frustrating. I leave the palace and fuse Oberion. This is because he's the earliest persona with the resistance to physical attacks and has great defense. This decision actually saved this run, as fighting the first guard captain turned out to be a rough one. He smokes through every other team member, and without Omarion, this fight would have been hard to win. After several close calls with both regular enemies and the guard captains, I send the calling card and square up against Kamoshida. This was easily the easiest boss fight in the game. Destroy the cup, take off the crown, and even without a persona, this fight only took 4 minutes. In the meantime I hang with Ryuji, visit Joan Jet MD for my 4pm dick flattening, craft more shit, head to Mementos, and deal with Shinji's whiny ass. The gang heads to an exhibition with best girl Art Marth, and we discover his sensei has a palace of his own. Something I found throughout this run is that fights are boring. Much like masturbation, there's no strategy in this run. It's simply beat the hell out of whatever's in front of you and hope you come out of it. Later, I fail to capture this ghost and legitimately get stuck in this area because I forgot how to solve the puzzle. I assumed you had to beat all enemies, but because of how weak the party was, I didn't want to chance it. Assuming I had no choice, I go into battle and get my ass handed to me by Rufus the Naked Mole Rat. I decide to leave the palace early and grind in mementos instead. I did this several times throughout the run, and I can easily say that I spent more time in mementos than doing anything else. Mementos is the easiest way to earn money, experience, and personas. Back in the palace, Ryuji and I clear out the area while On strips down for Yusuke. We run into Shere Khan, but due to his weakness to fire, this fight is cake. On and Yusuke end up in the palace, and Yusuke goes insane because he has the OK Boomer Girl stuck in his head. Okay, okay, Boomer, yeah, Boomer, whatever you say. Speaking of wanting to die, this fight made me want to do just that. There's a hard-hitting mini-boss surrounded by a group of Harvey Birdman, attorney at law. These dickheads show the Achilles heel of the run. 
Since I can only focus on one enemy at a time, groups of enemies can get in multiple turns, which can make things dangerous. In this case, the birdmen keep increasing their evasion, making it even harder to get rid of them. I have to try this part three times before finally getting lucky enough to wipe everyone out quickly. Then comes the fight that everyone came to see. But first, if you're enjoying the video, make sure to leave a like, and follow me on Twitter, otherwise you'll be stuck in Okumura's maze forever. Paperboy here is immune to all physical attacks, and seeing as I'm limited to the amount of items in my inventory, killing him will be an issue. Luckily, I figured out a strategy. I had boosted Ryuji's confidant high enough to where he learned follow-up, a move that gives a free critical hit on an enemy. If I only attack during Joker's turn, I get that many more chances at this ability activating. This is completely reliant on luck, and I had to try a few times to get it to actually kill him. But when the stars finally aligned, the victory was that much sweeter. Afterwards, we find the crane that can steal the treasure, and it's time to fight Madarame. Madarame's fight is usually the easiest, but this time around, it's one of the hardest. Madarame exploits both of my major weaknesses. I have to target multiple enemies, and two of those enemies cannot be hit by physical attacks. Takami's medicine comes in crucial here since it heals the whole party. Thankfully, there's an exploit to this fight that I wasn't aware of. If you manage to beat Madarame's paintings twice, the third time you can hit him with the black paint, making him weak to all affinities. It took some time, quite a few items, and two tries, but I managed to beat Madarame without having to grind. Afterwards, I focus on Yoshida's confidant, buy some books to gain more knowledge, and go to eat some ramen with Naruto. I craft Sheik Yoji to be my permanent persona this run. He has three nullifications and one weakness, so he's the perfect choice. I tell Kawakami I want to sleep with her, but she doesn't take the hint, and I white knight this Twitch streamer from her creepy mod. Best girl XJ9 tells me about her life as a teenage robot, and I get abstract with Jackson Pollock. I go see my alcoholic stepmom and try to give an intervention, and find Kaneshiro's palace, a floating bank practicing social distance. We're all young and stupid so we go in anyway, and Kaneshiro tries to loan shark us. Makoto didn't like the annual interest rate Kaneshiro gave us, so she decides to join the gang. With Makoto, my team from here on out will be Joker, Ryuji, and Yusuke. This group has the highest strength and endurance stats out of the group, which is all that matters this run. I leave the palace and earn the Gallows Fusion, which allows me to min-max my Big Paper Manta on holy levels of strength. I'll be showing you my entire build process this run if you want to try it out for yourself. I head back to the palace and face enemies like Fuki, Sweeky, Kinky, Furry, Creepy, Fairy, and Hawk. The enemies here are actually a little too strong for me at the current level, and I struggle making progress. So I decide to leave the palace again, grind levels and mementos, and use the Gallows on Shiki. I do some math, turn a big ass lock, and I'm ready to take it to Kaneshiro. Before I do though, I head to the Velvet Room and teach Null Nuke to Shiki, removing his only weakness. The process for creating a build requires a lot of luck, so enjoy this montage of me getting unlucky. Kaneshiro's shadow looks like Hitler mixed with Danny DeVito, and it makes me uncomfortable. Other than his weird appearance, this fight was surprisingly a joke. The plan was to do the same shit I've done for every other fight so far. Hit him with my weapon, and then just keep doing that for about 20 minutes until he doesn't exist anymore. Even when he jumps into his giant metal swine, nothing changes. Same problem, same solution. As long as you knock him off the pig before he crushes you, it's trivial. After Kaneshiro, I go see Miss Cleo, church girl who go to church and read her Bible, and take Makoto to hang out with the other machines at the arcade. I head back to Mementos for money when I discover an exploit. When fighting a group of Omarion, they will always go after the party member with the most health. Since Joker has the most health, and I had cheeky nullifying physical damage, they can't hit me, and I could essentially farm this area infinitely. Afterwards, I use the money to strengthen Shiki and give him the Defense Master and Attack Master passive abilities, automatically giving me double strength and defense every fight. I go see my plug for healing items, pay this woman way too much money to do my laundry, and let Mishima know that I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. I go to the diner and listen to lo-fi beats to relax slash study to with my cat, 
and use what I learned to ace my exams. Yusuke tells these girls that they belong to the streets. Shut up, bitch! And I get a text from a stalker asking me to steal her heart. What the fuck? Futaba spooks the squad and we're forced to break into her palace. Meanwhile, in the real world, she experiences some parent trap shit. I rolled through Futaba's palace in less than an hour, so I'll just skip to the boss. Best girl Wakaba is kind of a pain in the ass. Half the time she's in the air, so I can only hit her with gun attacks and items. Since neither of those do much damage, she takes multiple turns beating me. But since Joker is immune to damn near everything at this point, this fight is really just a waiting game. Whenever she gets hit with the ballista and the team can actually attack, it's over. She has a move that can put despair on your party, but I planned for this and bought the cure from Takami beforehand. This boss fight only took about 10 minutes on the first try. We return to the real world and find out that Futaba's sick, so she's on two week quarantine. That's right, baby! First YouTuber to make a coronavirus joke! Ha ha! I am so motherfucking funny! During that time, I go on a date with Yusuke, give Shiki Dodge Electric, Null Fire, and App Pupil, fulfill requests in Mementos, and bathe with the elderly. I max out Ryuji's Confidant since it gives him extra resistances, and craft Yusuke's weapon using the Electric Chair Fusion. I toss a coin to my Witcher, re-up on perk 30s, and start the Twin Warden's Confidant for stronger personas later. I fail Takami's Romance Prompt, so I legit reload the save in order to get it right. I visit Kawakami in the hospital, who is suffering from fat pussy disease, and Futaba makes a full recovery. Best Girl Hifumi takes me to Paris, and Sugar Daddy Yoshida takes me out to eat. The gang hits the beach to relax, and Ryuji falls in love when he sees An's Big Mommy Milky's Thick Milkers Wow Him Thirsty Uwu. But he gets rejected, so it's back to the boys. I enjoy a nice dinner with the family, and Ryuji talks about the Phantom Thieves in the open, because who gives a shit, right? Makoto uploads a virus to Sai's computer to help the Phantom Thie- Oh god damn it, now I have it. The gang goes to Hawaii just to flex on Instagram, and I almost reveal my crush, but was stopped by Mashima shitting and farting. I spend a romantic evening with Hifumi, whereas in Japan, Principal Eggbody tries to do the thing Edward Cullen did in Twilight and pays the price. Mona is pissy kitty when we get back, and look how that worked out for him. The gang goes to save him, but he's joined up with the best girl, Beauty Thief. Haru gets to roasting motherfuckers, so we decide to pull a reverse drive-by in mementos. Haru's fiance starts giving off some real OJ Simpson vibes, so the gang decides to pull up on him. Afterwards, I create Regent's accessory with the electric chair. It gives plus 3 strength and increases crit rate, something that will prove very useful later on. I boost Shiki to level 46 and start Okumura's dookie ass palace. We all know Okumura's palace sucks more eggs than Squillium Fancy Sun, but for this run, it was even worse. The first half of the palace enemies are dedicated to physical resistances, meaning that I will have to rely heavily on crafted items. The Iron Golem here repels physical attacks, but thankfully is weak to Psychic. Smoker's Lung is a problem. They usually show up in groups of three or more and are resistant to physical attacks. Normally, it's not a problem, but as soon as you kill one, they will summon another. Additionally, they use Famine Scream to lower the attack of everyone in your party. I literally have to abuse weaknesses with items or I'd be soft locked here. Beyond that, the palace is much easier. First, I'm tasked with finding the chief director and getting his membership card. I have to fight three tiers of workers in order to progress. All of them are resistant to physical attacks, but since there is no extra summoning, these fights are still manageable. The first worker is weak to nuke, the second is weak to wind, and the chief director is weak to psychic, although I end up beating him with a critical hit. Later in the palace, I get ambushed trying to run away, and these enemies use spirit drain on me. I only mention this so that people don't assume I was using abilities in between clips. I hop across a bunch of RGB barriers and make it to the second main objective, defeating the waves of workers. At first I was using items to abuse weaknesses, however I ran out early on and had no choice but to hack away like an infant with a pool noodle. This fight was a war of attrition, both sides just slapping away until one of us remained. Thankfully that side was mine. Afterwards is the maze. We all know how much I hate this maze, so you can only imagine how I felt when I had to do it twice because I got caught. We send the calling card to Okumura, Shiki learns the dodge ice passive skill, and it's time to duel. 
This boss fight was the one I was most worried about when I started. Not because it's hard, but because there's only 30 minutes to beat him. Okumura constantly sends out waves of workers to replace the ones you beat, all of them are resistant to physical attacks, and there's a final boss after you beat all the regular workers. Thankfully, Okumura actually resolves the problem himself. If you aren't killing the robots fast enough, he'll make them self-destruct to hurt you. This is much faster than me killing each one separately, so I begin focusing on other targets than the one that's about to explode. After all regular workers explode, the head executive is the final enemy between you and Okumura. The head executive isn't too hard. As long as you guard when Big Bang Order hits, you'll be able to take him down if you attack long enough. With no one left to help him, Okumura goes down easy, and I can finally get out of this nightmare. We bust out of the palace and find out that Okumura's treasure was the board game Zathura. Exposition Man hits us with the exposition, and I go to the bar to beg my stepmom to come home. I handle some more requests, earn some extra credit with my teacher, sit Makoto on the casting couch, and spill tea with Lala afterwards. I fix the laptop to get black market items, and go to the happiest place on earth to watch the saddest thing on earth. I max Yusuke's confidant but he still won't date me, and I hang out with my stepsister. Some of you already know where this joke is going. I max out Yoshida's confidant, and he gives a speech that I didn't expect. Secretary Clinton was sucking my dick for a hamburger at McDonald's. The FBI come to question me and I snitch like 6ix9ine, and I meet Light Yagami. I teach Mr. Origami resist bless, effectively nullifying every type of attack except Wind and Almighty. The gang heads to Lollicon and don't ask me how I know what that is, and Light figures out that we're L. So Jiro is more worried about us being phantom thieves than sibling lovers, and Light proposes we work together to catch Kira, and we really don't have a choice because, you know, he's blackmailing us. Sai won't stop bitching at me during interrogation, so I go into her palace to steal her heart. By this point, I'm so overleveled and have so many resistances that there's almost nothing that can touch me. I have the hot hand at dice and win big on the slots, thanks to Akechi being the definition of plot armor. Before the boss fight with Sai, I replace Dodge Electric with Null Electric, hang out with my little brother Sasuke, take Mishima and On to the same park because I'm lazy, max the Twin Warden's Confidant, start a garden with best girl Haru, accept that my stepmother is never coming home, join the Yakuza, and What are you doing, step bro? Makoto betrays her sister and gives her a calling card, and it's time to clap some rump. Sai's a pushover. Normally this boss fight would be hard, but because I'm over leveled out the ass and there's only one enemy the entire team needs to aim at, this fight turns into a speed run. This isn't to say that Sai wasn't putting out big damage on my team, but I was over prepared. High level, all team members at max confidant, and more than enough healing items spell disaster for the elder Nijima. After the fight I get ambushed by the police and taken into custody. Akechi shows up and tries helping me awaken my Persona, Persona 3 style, but this is Persona 5, so I just die instead. I respawn the next day and learn that Jeff Bezos is the bond that links us all. We head to Shido's palace and learn that we need 5 letters of recommendation to secure his treasure. Before we go after the letters, I craft Cybele. She knows Otto Moraku and Drain Bless, and is the persona needed to craft Makoto's best weapon. Since Shido's palace is the last chance I really have to work on confidants and stats, I wait until the last minute to go in. During this time I boost On and Stepmom's confidants, and maximize the confidants on little brother and stepsister. I also craft Yusuke and Makoto's guns for damage and crazy stat boosts. First up in Shido's palace is the politician, who gets bopped quickly. Makoto's weapon gives high crit rate, so she's OP in every fight. The second fight is with the Noble, and it's more of the same. I hit three crits almost consecutively, and man's had no chance. Third is the TV president, who has his cronies with him. They didn't help at all, and Monkey Man gets deleted. Mm, monkey. Fourth is the IT man, and it was actually the most difficult. The boss always uses one hit kill moves, and if you defeat his lackeys, he'll just summon more, forcing you to attack him first. Thankfully, all my team members know Endure, preventing one-hit kills, and Futaba knows Final Guard, which can save the entire party. Now, I say it was harder, but it was still an easy fight, due to Makoto critting every other turn. The final letter you get from Yakuza, and this fight is easy as pie. He mainly attacks with physical and curse moves, both of which Joker is completely immune to. 
We try to convince Akechi in the power of anime friendship, but he refuses and shows his true persona, the incel. Incel Akechi is only slightly harder. His attacks have a little more power, and occasionally he'll throw up a barrier that reflects physical damage. This, of course, means nothing to Joker, who reflects physical damage back, so the fight that is supposed to have monumental weight to the story ends up as an ass whooping, Stone Cold Steve Austin style. Akechi commits seppuku in a weird way, and we open the chamber that holds the treasure. Before I tussle with Shido, I craft Metatron and use him to create Joker's gun, which gives plus 5 to all stats, and buff Shiki as far as I can. Shido's fight starts off rough. You can't hit him with physical attacks at all, and only Joker can hit with gun attacks thanks to Shinya's confidant. This means that damage will have to come from items only, and items can only do 150 damage max. I slog through this part as fast as I can while I take big hits and stat debuffs. Thankfully I had enough items to get him into a second form, which blocks all magic but allows him to take damage from physical attacks. From here on out it's a pounding, as the collective damage is more than enough to breeze by his second and third forms. After the beast is slain, Shido decides to brawl it out like Sagat. Unfortunately for him, Joker nullifies just about everything, and the beatdown continues. Even with his extra power, extra turns, and super moves, Shido is outclassed by four teenagers with fake weapons. Beating Shido causes the boat to blow up, but Ryuji saves the day. And then we Before the final mission, I romance On and Oya. The only girl I didn't romance was Haru, and I'm still pretty depressed about it. Shido confesses, but we decide it's not enough, and we're just gonna take everybody's heart because we're drunk with power. By the time I reach the Mementos Palace, I'm level 70, which is way higher than almost all of the enemies there. Most fights last just 1-2 to two turns. Even fights with multiple enemies are easy, due to Haru's grenade launcher being able to hit every enemy. I beat all the enemies, solve all the puzzles, and head to the depths to fight the final threat. Turns out you can't beat the Holy Grail because everyone keeps dick riding it. So we lose, the world goes Lovecraftian, and we disappear. I get sent back to the Velvet Room where I'm to be executed, except fuck that, I'm a beast. The twins can't beat me, and fuse back into one to join me. Igor goes spooky, and it's up to us to defeat him once and for all. But not before we have to fight the Archangels, starting with Uriel. Uriel is a bitch. Next, Raphael? More like hold this L, chump. Gabriel? Pretty fucking chill actually, not gonna lie to you. Michael is the only one worth talking about. This fight was the hardest fight in the entire game. Michael is buff, can one-shot any member of your team or do big party damage, constantly summons angels that will heal and buff him, and he has no weaknesses. You have to make sure his angels are taken out immediately, or they will fully heal him. Constantly having to deal with them gives him more chances to kill you, and I'm very lucky that I got through this on the first try. Before the last fight, here are my final stats, in case you want to create a similar build. Holy Grail Part 2 was almost embarrassingly easy. After cutting the veins, I actually beat this thing in just 2 minutes. The Holy Grail turns into Yaldabaoth, and the final fight begins. Yaldabaoth was an interesting boss fight. He has a massive 15,000 health, so it'll take over 100 hits at least to bring him down. But he's not the only thing I have to aim at. He summons a book, gun, sword, and bell throughout the fight to plague me with random ailments that hurt my party. Ironically enough, these ailments rarely did anything. The biggest issue was the sword. Because it reflects physical attacks, I can't attack it after my gun ammo runs out. So, rather than try to fight it, I leave it alone and deal with the other weapons in Yaldabaoth, since its attacks aren't too terrible anyway. Other than that, there was no change in the game plan. Just keep on attacking and not dying, and eventually, the God of Control goes down. After the fight, we all know how the story ends. Satan falls from the sky, and his fofo makes sure God's kids don't grow. Ironically, the last move in the game is me using my Persona, so I guess no. You can't beat Persona 5 without a Persona. Thanks for watching. 
I was worried that this run might be a little boring, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you liked the video, consider giving it a like, or even subscribing if you like my content. The next run will be a Persona 5 Royal run, so I hope to see you all there. Peace.